Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service here at Burnaby North Baptist Church. And I hope you had a joyful, meaningful, and peaceful Christmas gathered with whoever you were able to be with. I know for many of us, uh, Christmas was different this year. Our usual gatherings had to be changed and modified with gathering restrictions. But I trust that wherever you were, you were able to truly celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, and his birth. Well, Pastor Doug is away on a break this week, so I will be taking the service, and I'm looking forward to leading us in worship, as well as sharing the message this morning. But first, a reading from Psalm 27. Psalm 27. A psalm of King David, who writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling, he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we wait on you. And you've promised that those who wait on you will renew their strength and rise up on wings as eagles. Will we look for your strength today because we can't do this on our own. Lord, we thank you that you have come into the world. You have come to be one of us. And by doing so, you overcame sin and death on our behalf. We thank you for this new life that we have in you. And we wait on you. We thank you. And wherever we're gathered this morning, Lord, we, we fix our eyes on you and we ask that you would fill us with your strength. We thank you for this day, for your new mercies. This morning. Help us to praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the Lord.
springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in man who folds witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, more
I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and never is my plea. Oh, the chains are released, I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus. For he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew. Till I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not. stillness of this time I have quieted my mind for my soul finds rest in you in the middle of the storm I am sheltered I am calm for my soul finds rest in you you are all I need I know you will crucify for me. The Savior of this life can only be Jesus. Jesus. When I'm traveling the last road, Carrying that heavy load, I will find my rest in you. When I'm bad from the fight and can't seem to see the light, I will find my rest in you. You are all I need and every day. You will be the truth. My life, my way. Draw me near to you and let me stay. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are the dawn that pierces night. We walk by faith now in your. Jesus. 
Jesus You're all I need My life, my peace I know that your spirit Lives in me Open up my eyes And let me see Jesus Jesus Open our eyes, Lord We want to see Jesus Reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Lord, that's our prayer this morning, that we could see you. Lord, there's so much in this world that diverts our attention, but help us to fix our eyes on you. Lord, you are our hope, you are our joy, you are our peace. You are the reason that we're here. We want to thank you and give you praise. And I pray that you would open our hearts, open our ears and our eyes so that we could hear what you have to say to us. We believe that your spirit is here among us wherever we are, that you wish to reveal your truth. That would happen this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time in the service, we normally would have our offering, but uh, we're not here to take it in person or even in person. So um, I just wanted to thank everyone for their continued faithfulness in supporting the church during this time. And I know that uh, many of us have been continuing to faithfully give and enabling the continuing ministry of this church. So on behalf of the council and the staff, we do give thanks. But let me pray. I know that many of you are giving online or by mail or dropping, dropping it in the mailbox. So let me pray a blessing over the offering that is given. Faithful Father, we thank you that you have called us to be a faithful people. And one of the ways that we show our faithfulness is in our giving. And I pray that what has been given on behalf of this church would be blessed. We believe that you will use it for your purposes and for your kingdom. We thank you for providing for each one of us, even through these uncertain times, as well as providing for your church. We ask that you would take what we give
and use it for your glory, for your name's sake. Amen. We'll go into a time of prayer for the needs of our congregation and for our world. Would you join me please in prayer? Lord, in that psalm that we heard this morning, David declared that you are our light and our salvation. We thank you for that. We thank you for your great faithfulness to us, your faithful love, which you have shown in so many ways. But we thank you right now for your faithfulness in hearing our prayer. Lord, we come to you because you are a good Father. And you know our needs even before we ask. And yet you invite us to ask. You invite us into dialogue with you because of this relationship we have through Christ. But first, we just want to thank you for being a good and faithful Father. Thank you, Abba. Lord, we want to thank you for Christmas, the season of remembering and acknowledging that Jesus is the light who has come into this world. We thank you that we get to celebrate that fact and walk in your light now. And yet we, we know so many in this world continue to live in darkness continue to live apart from you. And so we lift them up. We know our days are not that different from the days when you came as a baby. When you were on earth, many rejected you and chose darkness instead of light. And Lord, we pray for those who continue to walk in darkness that they would see your light and receive your light. Lord, we pray that you would break hardened hearts and soften them. That you would breathe life into dry bones and cause them to rise. Lord, we ask for your light to shine and be known in this world. Lord, we pray for those that are sick. Lord, I've um, been hearing more and more, it seems, in recent weeks of people passing away or getting sick. And Lord, we live in fearful times when uh, hospitals are full and we know there's a lot of anxiety even about colds and flus because of you know, the state of our, our world right now. And we ask that you would be with those that are isolating because of COVID or um, unable to be out of their homes as well. We lift up those that are, are sick. Lord, we know those affected by cancer and COVID and many other things. And we ask that you would bring your healing touch to those that need it. Lord, we pray in this continued struggle against COVID, we ask uh, for protection over our land, for businesses and um, people's financial stability that has been affected by lockdowns. And we ask that you would provide for those that are in need, that you would mobilize your people to provide help where help is needed. We thank you for our church and the way that we have loved one another through these times. And I want to thank you for the blessing of our gathering last Sunday when we were able to just enjoy fellowship, even though it wasn't face-to-face. -face. Um, we had that sense of community through the 
the Zoom party. And I thank you for those that helped out with that and, and organized that. And I pray that people would um, be blessed as we look forward to a time when we can be together in person, that things like that would, would help us to get through. Lord, I want to pray for uh, the leaders in our, in our land, those who are making decisions about how to bring our nation through this, for the medical experts, for Dr. Henry and for our Premier and Prime Minister and all those that are in power, that you would give them wisdom and that uh, we could be directed through this storm in a way that um, where the people's good is at the forefront. Lord, I know that there's so many um, competing ideas and desires in the world and uh, thoughts on what to make of what we're going through, but I pray that through all this we could continue to love one another and to put the good of one another at the forefront and that there would be no selfishness in people's hearts. Lord, I pray you would continue to equip our church in how to love one another, how to be a community and how to glorify you through all of this. And Lord, we pray for Christians around the world many who are even now being persecuted. We lift them up. We pray your protection over your people as we go through various kinds of storms, depending on our circumstances and where we live. We thank you that we live in a, a nation where we can be free to worship. And even though we're apart right now, help us to um, remember that your spirit is with us that your kingdom is with us wherever we go. And Lord, we pray, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You all had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Uh, my family, like many of you, had to modify how we celebrated this year. Our table was emptier than usual for Christmas dinner. It was just the four of us, which was uh, a change. But I took comfort in familiar things like Christmas music, faithful friends, who are dear to us gather near to us once more oh wait <laughs> that didn't happen this year never mind um, through the years we all will be together if dr bonnie henry allows <laughs> i'm still workshopping that one it might not be relevant after this year i hope not but the point is like many other things this year, our Christmases were disrupted. In fact, most of our lives have been disrupted in various ways this year. We could call 2020 a year of disruption. And we all lived through this, so I don't need to list the many ways that COVID-19 has interrupted and affected our lives. Maybe not to the extent of, say, the bubonic plague or the Great Depression or the world wars that have affected previous generations. Yet I think it's safe to say that 2020 will be remembered for the wrong reasons. But we're almost done with 2020, amen? In fact, today is the last Sunday of 2020. So, congratulations for making it through. 
Seriously, though, I think many of us will be glad to put this year behind us. And the new year often comes with a sense of hope and a fresh start. But we don't actually know whether things will get better or worse. Changing a, uh, a calendar to 2021 isn't automatically going to make things better or make COVID go away. Through the arrival, though the arrival of a vaccine uh, certainly gives many of us hope. And we pray for God's blessing on our nation, our community, our world. And of course, as Christians, we're called to live in faith and in hope. I often get to preach the last Sunday of the year. And I try to wrap up the year with some words of encouragement and challenge. Well, this year has had enough challenges, so I thought I'd try to end on a note of encouragement. So in this world and year of troubles, what is the takeaway for what we've been through and what lies ahead? What do we need to make it through the unknown of what lies ahead? To not only survive, but thrive through the troubles and the storms and the uncertainties of this world, whether we're talking about COVID or persecution or illness or even death itself. The word I've been thinking about lately a lot is perseverance. Perseverance isn't glamorous and it goes against the grain of our instant gratification society. Perseverance is work. It's hard. It means to keep going even when things are tough. Sometimes perseverance is just putting one foot ahead of the other, even when you don't want to carry on. Sometimes it's picking yourself up when you fall. But unglamorous perseverance is something central and essential to the Christian life which is the life of discipleship. Eugene Peterson aptly describes Christian discipleship as a long obedience in the same direction. We're all on a journey as Christians of following Jesus. And on this path, we face pitfalls, we face opposition, we face struggles, with the world, with the devil, and with our own sinful natures. And we will face trouble. Troubles like COVID-19, as well as many other things. We will need perseverance, as well as the help of the Holy Spirit to make it through. So this morning, I want to focus on this uns unsung virtue of perseverance. Webster's defines perseverance as continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, and opposition. And synonyms include endurance, persistence, and steadfastness. Many of us entered this pandemic expecting, I suppose, a, a short-term thing. Remember two weeks to bend the curve? Now we realize we've been in a marathon the whole time, with months ahead of us to go at least. So this is where endurance and perseverance comes in. <clears throat> the Bible certainly speaks of the importance of perseverance, of not giving up, particularly in the context of Christian discipleship. James writes, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And again from James, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work in you so that 
you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, when we endure trials and tri tribulations and troubles, such as the ones we've encountered this year, it produces something positive in us, perseverance. And perseverance is positive, it's a good thing, because of the work it does within us, which is that it brings us to spiritual maturity and completion. In Galatians, Paul writes, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So do not give up. Something good is going to come. And again from Paul, in Romans, he writes, We boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. We'll come back to that. Because we know that, and this is the part I want to focus on, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Perseverance is part of a process by which godly character and hope is built in us. It's an integral and necessary part of discipleship. So let's give this unglamorous virtue of perseverance its due today. And I'm going to do something today I swore that I would never do when I was preaching, which is use an acrostic. <laughs> you might know what an acrostic is. It's usually in point form, and it begins, um, each point begins with a letter, which then form a word or phrase, which is the message or the point that is being taught. And I grew up, maybe like you, in a church where the pastor used acrostics a lot. And i got to be honest, I thought they were super cheesy. But the thought came to me to do an acrostic on the word persevere. And once the thought came to me, I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I took that as my cue. God is giving me permission to let go of my bias against acrostics. And so since this is the end of 2020, why not? So here is my first preaching acrostic. Hopefully it isn't cheesy. And here it goes. It's going to be the word persevere. Persevere. Beginning with P. Press on towards the goal. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul liked to describe the Christian life as a race, not a competition between believers, but a shared journey, with a common goal and prize ahead for us, one which we share together at the end. So what is this goal and prize that is worth all the struggling and pressing on and putting one foot in front of the other? A few verses earlier, Paul describes it as the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, and to be found in him. Our goal is to know Jesus and to be found in him. Let's press toward that goal, setting aside anything that might hinder us, which brings us to our next letter, E. Eyes on Jesus. The author of Hebrews tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If knowing Jesus and being found in him is our goal and our prize, then we need to fix our eyes on him. In Psalm 27, which I read at the beginning of the service, David wrote, One thing I have asked of the Lord. And one thing that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and that I may gaze upon his beauty. Brothers and sisters, to gaze upon the Lord's beauty is a wonderful thing, one worth seeking after. Fixing our eyes, gazing upon Jesus, 
implies at least a couple of things. We will fix our eyes, but also our hearts and mind on the things of Jesus, beginning with Scripture, which is his word and the primary means through which we know him. Secondly, it implies that our focus gets taken off the things of this world, including our problems, which often discourage and distract us. In our vision, our Lord must be bigger than our problems. Which brings us to our next letter, R. Remember who's in control. Through scripture, we see God writing the story of history from beginning to end, from creation to the new heavens and the new earth. Nothing has happened outside of his view, his power, his knowledge, or his will. He writes the pages of history, and he's already shared the end of the story. He wins. And the good news is that through Christ, we win as well. The Christian life is a journey toward victory, but the journey isn't necessarily an easy one. In fact, it isn't meant to be. Jesus promised that we would encounter troubles and tribulations, but on that journey, he promises that he will watch and care for his children. And nothing, no circumstances, or even Satan himself, can separate us from his faithful covenant love for all who put their trust in him. S. Seek first his kingdom. Jesus told his disciples, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what, sh what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Of course, our daily needs are important. God knows that. But a higher priority than that, according to Jesus, is to seek the inbreaking kingdom, the kingdom that is among us and within us. The kingdom is the reign of God that Jesus, uh, the reign of God made manifest through those who love and follow him. When we live in the reality of following God and seeking his kingdom, things like food, clothes, and even COVID-19 are no longer the prior priority because we believe that God reigns and is sovereign over these things and that he will look after us. However, well, that means we don't need to worry, but being citizens of God's kingdom, however, doesn't mean that we get to ignore the problems of the world. On the contrary, it means that we get to be God's hands and feet and light and do things like feed the poor and clothe them, stand for truth and justice and peace, and do things that we can to help others during crises like this pandemic. Being a kingdom seeker means our focus is on God. And because he calls us to love others, our focus is not on our own needs, but on the needs of others, which brings us to E encourage one another. In the Christian life, we are in a race, but we're not competing against one another. Rather, we are on the same team. We're not meant to press on and run the race by ourselves, but with one another, supporting one another. Some of my favorite sports moments in racing is when a runner is struggling to the finish line either because they're injured or simply exhausted. The finish line is close, but they fall to the ground, unable to go another step. Suddenly, another racer comes alongside them, takes them by the shoulder, lifts them up, and supports them across the finish line. We should be like that in our Christian life. We should be cheering one another on as one body. A win for one is a victory for the whole team.
Paul writes to the Thessalonians, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. The victory only through Jesus. God has given us everything we need to be victorious, but we need to remember that our victory, the one that matters, has nothing to do with us and everything to do with what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. There's nothing we can add to that through our own effort other than receive it by faith. So not only does Jesus' victory give us hope for eternity, but it also carries us through our day-to-day -day struggles in life. Paul wrote to the Romans about the enduring love of Christ and asks what can separate us from it, noting that nothing, including trouble, hardship, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword, can separate us from the love of Christ. These days we could add COVID-19 to that list. All these things that might scare us, that make, might make us change course or stumble in the path, Paul's view on all these things is this. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's Paul's assessment. We are more than conquerors, even against all these things, but not through ourselves or our own strength but through Christ who loves us. E, I had endure, but I, I uh, replaced it with embrace. Embrace suffering. Because everyone in life has to endure suffering. But I believe that as Christians, we're called to do more than that. We're called to embrace it. Now this doesn't mean that we seek out suffering. But when we do suffer, we choose to see God's redemptive process in it, as Jesus did on the cross, and as Paul did in his own life. Paul even boasts about his sufferings. In 2 Corinthians, um, he talks about how he was beaten, imprisoned, shipwrecked, and much more. Why does he boast in that? because he knows that the good purposes of God through these sufferings were being worked out in his life. And to the Philippians, Paul wrote, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Wait, what? Come again, Paul? You want to know the power of his resurrection? I get that. We all want that, right? The resurrection power. But he also says, I want to know the power of his, he wants to share in his sufferings and his death. Did Paul get mistranslated? By no means. Paul knows that suffering is a necessary part of forming Christ's likeness in us. It's part of what God uses to do necessary work in us. So perhaps we need, instead of, uh, running away from suffering, we actually need to embrace suffering as part of God's work in our lives. As Paul tells the Romans, we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. We glory in our sufferings. And in particular, suffering for the gospel because of the work God is doing in us through that. are rest in jesus jesus said come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light resting is not a sign of weakness it's part of a healthy rhythm that god has designed for our lives that's why God gave us Sabbath. But our weekly Sabbath is only a shadow of the true rest that we find in God through Jesus. We come to him to find our true rest. If we try to run the race in our own strength and without resting in him, 
It's a recipe for disaster and burnout. As we run the race, let's remember to rest in him so that we can persevere. So take time in the busyness of your life to get away for a while, be alone with Jesus, to worship, read his word, speak to him in prayer, gaze upon his beauty, and just rest there in that place. Just rest. Finally, E. Expect God's goodness. We know that God is good. Amen? We've tasted and we've seen it. He's a father who loves to bless his children. And Paul tells us in Romans that he works all things to the good for those who love him. And we know Jesus has defeated sin, death, and the devil for us. And that the end of history is already written and that we will share in his blessings and goodness eternally. And sometimes we think of these blessings and promises as something for the future. And that's true. One day when Christ returns, his full glory and goodness will be revealed on the earth. But the 27th Psalm, which I read earlier, has uh, King David showing a different perspective. He writes, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Like David, we should also live in expectation of God's goodness, not just in the life to come, but here and now in the land of the living, in 2020 and 2021, and as we wait out COVID, because God's kingdom is here, among us, within us. His kingdom means that his reign is among us, and his goodness is among us as well, wherever his people are. Over Christmas, we sang that wonderful carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, which says, He comes to make his blessings flow as far as the curse is found. And that is why Jesus came, why he took on flesh, why he died, and why he rose again. And to us and in us and through us, his blessings flow. Even in this world that's fallen, and cursed through sin. And his goodness is revealed through his faithful provision for our needs, where we don't even act, have to ask because he already knows our needs. And his goodness is also shown through one another, his people. We get to be the goodness and blessing of God to one another. So let's expect God's goodness in this new year. So that's my acrostic for persevere. To recap, press on toward the goal. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's remember who's in control. Seek first his kingdom. Encourage one another. Victory is only through Jesus. Let's learn to embrace suffering. Let's rest in Jesus. Let's expect God's goodness. As we finish up 2020, we've all gone through changes, challenges, hardships, and difficulties. And we don't know what the future holds, but I pray that each of us will persevere, knowing that this is how God chooses to shape us. We don't know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. And in him we can and will persevere. As we close our final service for this year, I, uh, I wanted to sing a blessing over you because I think we all need to be reminded that God is for us and wants to bless his children. Clive, can you take this to the closing song? Thank you so much.
Lord bless you and to keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you Lord turn his face toward you Bless you and Happy New Year, everyone. See you later.